I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making, you know, and nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Boys, I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. My bro, bro. Yeah, y'all I mean, I call them all my bro. She like, look, honeymoon, like, uh-uh, you too nice. Fuck that. I am. It's not about being nice. I just don't give a damn. You can't move me. If I see something, I'm going to share it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to do what I want to do. You want me not to talk about your shit and not call you out. That's why y'all not going to win. You can't play mind manipulation with me. I know reverse mind control. You don't want me looking. I'll be looking again. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> to try to lay them off um i also told them that they will be sued for doing so shut um, up yet they still choosing to pick these people which they said keith freeman gave them so make sure y'all had him y'all also um to target just these individuals um normally when you do layoffs or consider layoffs you normally go you meet with uh, management staff and very, you go stop pause this is very important to me because i'm just going to be honest i'm going to start to get this wrapped up i, I want to know why the trustees behave like this don't mind, love me. I love you 100. Judge Petty C, I didn't want you in nothing, girl. I'm a good friend. I don't like drama. You ain't about to be in that, girl. But I could tell you now. Fuck it. I'll tell you later on when I call you. Um, anyway, yeah, this is very important right here. We're about to get to the end because my main question is what if you're scared, get a dog. And what the hell happened with these trustees? Because she started literally ragging them. I'm going to be honest. Let's listen. She started ragging them. Line by line, are you all with things or what people can make cuts at and do things to make it make sense? Right now, people are uh, voting with their emotions. Oh. Out, whatever it is. Again, the mayor had no say so in this. They just did what they wanted to do. And so sit here and talk about things. And we get nothing. So when these things come, because that's your right hand. Hold on. Financials. Um, once everything come up, I did tell everybody that we was going to do a town hall meeting. It relates to the financials because everyone's waiting on financials. We all are. Mm -hmm. So I just want to clear that up as well because people like to just say stuff, but they don't educate the public on how and the why. So like, I'll give you another example. Do you know that we have uh, union contracts, different things that go towards a budget, but no one's telling you that. So once it goes to the budget, where's the extra revenue that you brought in to cover the budget amount? You just give somebody a raise, but yet you got to figure out how to pay that out. Yeah. And then when they try to cut things like, like I said earlier, before when I say this, code enforcement, why would you cut the only thing That's where people right. are producing revenue? They go on they buy tickets for people yeah. that ain't cut their grass. Why would you, why would you lower the fines of $500 to people who don't even make a lot of money? Who before I came in was making $30,000 till I decided to pay my friends $75,000, $120,000, you know, why the fuck would you try to lower that? You know these motherfuckers broke, and I'm trying to break them. That's what she has said. Whether it's the bank or whoever, and other issues in our community. So what I'm saying to you is, you rather lay people off, like I said, peanuts, mm. peanuts, compared to the. And then she said, she said, this is the very good part. Then she said, y'all not hitting the motherfucking lick with the things y'all trying to fix anyway, because I didn't spend billions of dollars. They hitting the lick. This, this what she said. That's what she said allegedly things that you claim is needed. So again, that's my statement for the record. I'm still Blessings and Sensitive Enlightenment Talk family. In today's episode of Dalton's Chronicles, a review of their contentious board meetings, we're going to take a flashback to the many instances where the trustees tried to get a grip on what was happening with 
the credit cards. So we're going to take a little trip down memory lane so you can see the progression of how we got here today, highlighting that Dalton is in a deficit greater than $6 million, as well as Thornton Township is on the way down the same yellow brick road if they do not take her authorization and her friend's authorization off of the credit card. So today we're going to start with a clip that dates back to 1, 2024, and we're going to progress all the way up until August 2024 until we are highlighting the Lori Lightfoot report. Again, I want to say thank you for being here, part of the Levi family, tuning in. Hit the like button. Welcome to our journey. Flashback of all the contentious meetings and how did we get here related to Hinyard's credit card spending. I would like to make a superseding motion. I'm going to write that down. Uh, I would like to make a superseding motion uh, for the bills as read amending and removing the following items on page two, Aurelio's Pizza, right. $131.63, page two, Best Western Plus, $318.14, page two, Chicago Midway Airport, $200, page three, Cooper's Hawk Winery, $557.68, page three, Dollar Tree, $145.32, page three, Food for Less, $107.99, Page six, Irie Jerk Hut, $1,356.22. Page six, Italian Fiesta, $113.59. Page six, JJ Fish and Chicken, $68. Page seven, Johnny T's Bistro and Blues, $90,000. I'm sorry, $90.30. Page seven, Kirk's Barbecue, $676. Page eight, Pot Belly Sandwich Shop, $126.57. Page eight, Ruby Soul Food, $674. Page nine, Sophia Tamales and Corn, $2,400 even. And page nine, The Tasty Crab, $458.79. Uh, my motion will be that we pay the bills as read, removing the items stated. All right, is there a second? Second. Okay, that's been a motion. Second, any discussion? All right, so I have, I have a discussion. So yeah. well, the problem I have with you guys coming to board meetings and acting as though y'all don't get things I don't appreciate. I think this year you should tell the truth that you guys don't do your job. And if you need information, you should ask for information that you feel you need. Don't get to a board meeting and put on a show. How you going to lead trustee house when you don't even know where to start? You have to lead. Stop leading blind. You're leading them blind and y'all following him. That's the sad part about it. Prime example. This is a what? electric warrant list. That means they did what? It's already spent. So how dare you get here and showboat for the people out there in the audience? You already know what it is. So why are we sitting here playing this game, wasting time, saying I'm going to take this out, that out. It's already been paid. Come on now. Stop playing. This is 2024. Let's move forward. Let's handle the business. Stop letting the business handle y'all because y'all keep coming playing games. I'm just over it. Like, come on, let's focus on the business, move forward. And if anybody know what our authorities are up here, which let me remind you, if my authority is $5,000, y'all pulling out $200, $100, stop it. If his authority is $20,000, stop it. That's what I'm saying. It's a show. Stop sending the people off. Let's move forward with the business. It's an electric warrant list. That means it has been paid. But go ahead for the obstacles if y'all want to do that. Uh, call a row clerk. Mayor, you asked for discussion then. I tried to speak and you started talking. So can I No, I something? didn't start talking. Y'all didn't did, hear you, you say did. anything. But if you want to say I something, did. just ask to be recognized again. Well, can I we going to run this business the way it's supposed to? Let's, let's be respectable. Follow Robert Rules of Order. Uh, no. But go ahead, since you got something to say now. I do have something go ahead. to say. It's an electronic warrantless, electronic. Also, you keep and you made it very clear that these have been paid. Um, last meeting, which I said, and um, the finance director wasn't here at that time, but I'm so glad she's here now. She stated that we didn't have a credit card anymore because she said the trustees cut it off. That's so, true. Oh, 
okay, so if we don't have, I requested in the email, could we get the final statement? Because if we haven't received the credit card since May of 2023, and she stated that we cut it off, um, no documentation has showed that it's been cut off. So what card are they using outside of ACH debits? Okay, before you start, yeah, I'm gonna give you the flow. Let's clear some things up. You guys did cut it off. When? You guys, hold on, I'm trying to explain it so you'll know. You guys had control of the bank account that trustee house did illegally and Clark Key went illegally and hijacked the bank account for an entire year. You know, like I know, anybody that understand money know that you cannot see anybody's information when someone else is on the bank account. That's that means that credit card. card. Hold on. Credit card, not That's what I'm speaking card. of. Well, you going to let me finish? Go ahead. That's what I said. We got to be respectful. You say okay. your stuff. I'll be quiet. You got to be quiet when I talk. So what I'm saying to you is that if you guys have done that, which y'all did as trustees, no one up here could see anything that y'all was doing for an entire year. We didn't have access to anything because Jason House was on the bank account. And so it was Allison Key. The mayor wasn't on it. So we couldn't call, check up, check in, see what was going on because you guys was the holders on the account. So that's number one. Number two, I'm going to let her respond to your question because you get here at a board meeting and you know how to pick up the phone, call my phone. Yeah, Hopefully you'll do that this year since you said you want change and you want us to work together mm -hmm. and have to start by starting trust voucher. You can't sit here and say that out your mouth and then don't do it. Yep. So we're going to see what happened because you could have called if you had questions. Instead of coming, put on a science show, we just did it for an entire year. Y'all should be tired of it. Y'all should be ready to actually do some progress here in the village besides sit here and we arguing over a, a warrant list. Come on now. People do work in our village. They should be paid for the work they have done. But yet y'all hold the progress, hold the people hostage, picking and choosing who y'all want to pay. That's not right. That's discriminatory. You guys are discriminating against people because what? They didn't give y'all money for y'all D2s? Like, why do y'all pull people out of this trustee house? Y'all need to stop with the mess. Go ahead, um, finance director. Good evening. Um, our bank accounts do not have a debit card, to be clear. The credit cards are issued by the bank. The last card was canceled or suspended in June by whoever had administrative rights over that account, which is not anyone sitting up here. Thank you. Um, that's sad. So the last statement that you received was in June for that account. OK, we the last statement we received was in May. Um, I, I said it and I was very clear when I said it. I said in communication because you just stated be respectful to people. Not not you, Tangine, I'm talking to the mayor. Be respectful. But. Um, Janice Johnson had access to the account. So for mayor, for you to sit there and say only the clerk and Jason House, that's an absolute lie because she cuts the check. So I'm sure she wasn't cutting the check blindly. Also, we have stuff on this list from June. She makes the decisions what checks go out, which I'll tell her to hold and not hold. So that means she had access because we had emails from the bank that showed the people that had access and control. Because at some point, you guys stopped letting the clerk and Jason House even see what was in the account. And they had to send the information via email. So don't get up here and say nobody had access to the account because Janice Johnson and I'm sure the finance director Tangini had access. Nevertheless, I, I just want to be very clear because I requested if you're saying that it was canceled, show us the June statement that was canceled because for at some point or some shape, form or fashion, when you did get back on the bank account and the clerk was on the account at the time, the last statement starts showing the American Express card that's been used through, through the police department. When Tanjanique said there was no credit card at all, when the American Express card originally had $3,000 here, $3,000 there that we were seeing until we were moved from my viewpoint. Now it's 37000 50000 28000 So that means that all of the transactions that was on the Fifth Third account have now been used through the American Express card. I don't care if it's Fifth Third American Express, U.S. Bank, we're entitled to it. So please just give us access to either accounts payable again on my viewpoint or the credit card so we don't have to sit here. We can see what you spent it on and move forward. I see something on here that Trustee House took off, which I would have been like, oh, I think I know what that is from the way that it's line item. But I'm not going to sit here and fight a battle that I don't have a receipt for. So just be fair. Can I address go, go, go ahead. Um, Janice had access to see the account, to print out bank balances, which we had to do uh, based on a court order. Yes. That's why we provided bank balances mm -hmm. that, that was by court order. Right, but the mayor just said that, that nobody had access to it. Administrative access was only by the two people who were over the account, which mm -hmm. they were the only ones who could add or cancel any card mm -hmm. on the account. That was not something Janice could do. She cool. did not have that access. Correct. Any check that Janice cut had to be signed by those two people who had administrative access. Janice could not issue a check without those signatures first. Preach. Is that uh, no, that, you trustee House or Clerk Key. Did either one of y'all cut off the credit card? No. Okay, thank you. From the, uh, bank. Please forward the email to the Board of Trustees. I've been waiting on a whole lot of stuff. Okay, so. I have a comment, Mayor. Okay, go, go ahead. Um, 
when we're talking about access to the bank and the information, myself and Clerk Key, checks were printed by the finance department. Checks were presented to myself and the clerk. We would sign the checks, assuming they were approved on the warrant list. Once the checks were signed, they were handed immediately back to the finance department. Now, what happened with the checks beyond that point was beyond Clerk Key and myself's knowledge. Some checks were released, from my understanding. Some checks were not released. But that's past the point of our role in that process. Secondly, when we're talking about the credit card, I made no request to cancel a credit card. I would have liked to, I'll be honest, which I would like to, but I made no changes. That the Everything was, being, was scrutinized through the court. If there was something improperly done, the court would say so. So there was no changes. And then additionally, when we're talking about credit card charges, in order to make a charge on the credit card, you have to have the credit card in your hand. So every item that we're talking about being charged had nothing to do with myself, had nothing to do with clerk key. It had to do with the card holder and the person that had the card in their hand. I didn't go, I didn't take any trips. I didn't fly anywhere. I didn't do anything that benefited Jason House or anybody else improper. Every charge we're talking about was done by the card holder. And um, so whoever authorized that, that's their responsibility. As trustee Belcher mentioned, all we're really asking for is the documentation and the proof. Personally, I would say ask that it be put on the website so that way it's transparent because we spend a lot of time in this meeting saying, I sent that, I didn't send it. At this point, please, anything you send to me, put it on the website, I'll get it for myself. Thank you. Go ahead, Patrick. So you keep saying allege. Um, that's not a true statement. Allegedly, use it the right way because when they give you the check, it's the items you voted on, trustee house. And for the record, it's many a times this body, this board have voted for you guys to sign checks and you refuse to sign the checks at all. So when you state facts, state the truth, state facts that make sense. You're making up things that sound good for you or what you feel that you want doing or whatever with a credit card, stop. It's all like a spin cycle up here. That's all y'all do. Y'all get up here, we put on the show for the outside world. But yet, if you guys want any information, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say it again. All y'all have to do is ask. All y'all got to do is call me. I tell all y'all that don't none of y'all call me because y'all too busy fighting. Y'all too busy doing a smear campaign. And all y'all do is call if y'all want any type of information, any. But no one calls my phone. We get to a board meeting and we sit here for hours going back and forth over, you said this, we doing this. This was going on. This second. We still got AP warrantless and three other items. So go ahead. Mayor, the we in the spirit of working together because it is 2024 and we all just set up here and stated that our whole goal is to work together for the betterment of the community when we, you sit here and you say when you sit here and you say we don't want to go back and forth we do not want to go back and forth but then you all say out of your mouth we have credit card statements that we don't have they're missing they're clearly missing if we do not have them if they were not emailed to us if they were not sent to us and as we all know my viewpoint access our access has been denied, restricted, should I say. So yes, we can't access it, but we cannot look up receipts. I remember as a trustee, you sat in that very seat and you stated to the mayor at the time that you would not blindly vote on bills or, uh, or options that you've met on things that were purchased that you cannot present receipts or evidence for. You stated that out of your mouth as a trustee. So it baffles me that we sit up here and now that you're the mayor, when the very trustees are asking for this information, you're stating in that term, oh, well, we've sent it to you, knowing that you all did it. We're not asking for anything that you didn't ask for as a trustee. Let's first make that clear. We're also missing financial statements. We haven't received financial statements in months. How is it that as a board, we're over the finances? That's the trustee's job. We keep hearing, oh, well, no one's doing their job. No one's doing their job. This is our job. We are here for checks and balances whether you all like it or not. So if we request the information, it should be provided to us. But yet we sit here and then we have invoices. We have emails every day. Dear, dear village of Dalton, let's start here. Dear village of Dalton, I have a payment um, for work that I've done. I'm gonna take out the invoice number for their privacy. Where village of Dalton purchased, they purchased lights. We, the board approved the lights in June. Here it is, we're in January of the, the, the following year. They haven't received payment. Here's another email. Please see email below from the vindicator ind indicating that he has not received payment or communication on this bill. Payment invoice. Then he have all of these invoices. This object was approved by the board in September, and we're steady waiting for payments. Hold on. There's one more. Are you done? No, there's one more. Hold on. Let me go it. Here we are. 
9-11 from this vendor. We called Keith at 12. He said that the check was mailed. We spoke to Janice. They said that the check was mailed. The email was sent. Several calls to the villages, which were all unanswered. Then we sent emails to the following trustees, Jason House, Brittany Norwood, Keanu Belcher. So when we're receiving these invoices and when we're questioning these things, we're not doing it to go back and forth. There has to be some type of transparency. We will not be able to work forward as a village if we don't have transparency. And that's all we're asking for. If you don't want to email us the receipts or pro provide us with the receipts, make it easy. Provide us back with access with my viewpoint so that we're not back and forth. But I just want to state for the record that it's unfair that as the mayor, you don't see fit for us to receive this information. But as trustee, this is the very thing that you were fighting for. Transparency. Thank you, Mayor. For the record, trustee. We're not back and forth. But I just want to state for the record that it's unfair that as the mayor, you don't see fit for us to receive this information. But as trustee, this is the very thing that you were fighting for. Transparency. Thank you, Mayor. For the record, trustee. You guys get everything that we have. We send an email, you get the financial reports, you get everything, and I've shown that in videos. Now you want me to go do some more work and show you again that you get what we tell you you should have. Now, as it relates to uh, transparency, we have been nothing but transparent here at the Village of Dalton. You guys can do spin cycles, scare tactics, tell people that we're not when we are. At the end of the day, I keep stating this, if it's something that you don't feel comfortable with when you come to this meeting, you have literally 48 hours to make sure you reach out, ask questions, ring up an invoice, talk about a receipt, whatever it is, but y'all all choose not to because this is your only time to get on a platform and talk or say whatever you want to say. When y'all really, if you're going to be adult about it, call somebody. Mention uh, we are going to uh, resurface 154th Street from Dorchester to MLK Drive. Uh, that project is currently in the design phase. Uh, the village uh, will be receiving $1.8 million for this project uh, through uh, a CMAP grant. Um, the project is slated to start construction at the end of the summer. Um, before you on the agenda, we have the 2024 CDBG grant application. This is a grant application that we apply for each and every year. Along with that, also the Invest in Cook. But the Invest in Cook uh, doesn't require uh, a resolution or certification of resolution to submit uh, with the grant. Uh, we'll be applying for the maximum amount of $400,000. Uh, this grant application is due on Friday, March 22nd. Uh, and I'll entertain any questions that the board may have about this. Uh, the superintendent and myself uh, will be looking at various roadways to place on this grant application and alleys. Um, also, keep in mind that we apply for the funding this year. Um, they won't make an award uh, recommendation until August. Um, you don't receive the notice to incur grant costs of the sub-recipient agreement until December, and the funds will be available next year. So we apply for everything this year. Funds become available next year in 2025. What was the date that you said for the pardon? What was the date that you said for the application that you said you guys were applying for? March twenty second, Friday, five p.m. It's an online grant application. So besides the grant application, we have to have a resolution and a certification of the resolution and a copy of the most current audit uh, has to be completed along with some uh, other items uh, to include in the grant application submittal. Mayor, may I ask a question? Go ahead. Do we have a copy of the current audit audit to uh, supply? What was that? I said, do we have a copy of a current audit that he said that would have to be with the application? Do we have a copy of the current audit? We do not. Okay. All right. Is that it? Okay. Thank like you. That. So then, uh, Go ahead. Uh, the payments you're going to do. I comment. Okay. Well, before we start into the back and forth, let my. Uh, administration finished with their reports because all they're going to do is turn into a back and forth and then we never going to get out here. So um, go ahead, Kim, you have the floor code for us. Good evening, Mayor. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Mm -hmm. Good evening, trustees, residents. I'm Kim and uh, my report is brief. It's always four, four or five words. We wrote 142 tickets and we collected $24,624. But tonight, um, I'm offended and I'm appalled because I moved to Dalton to become a part of the change that I want to see. And it's funny that someone could say, yeah, because don't nobody want to work here. Who want to work in a hostile environment and deal with people like you guys? Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to sit up here at the board meeting, everyone. I make an excuse not to be here because this is pathetic. No other municipality, no other board meeting. Do you see people being disrespected to the mayor or the person that's in charge of the meeting? Mm -hmm. Disrespect has gone on too far. And as far as budget cuts, when people call about dogs, mm -hmm. we the ones that go get those dogs. But if you guys not not willing to uh, give us what it is that we need in our budget to continue to pick up dogs, we can't do our job. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like the fact that down my block where I live, it's dark. We need street lights. I got a couple of senior neighbors 
and veterans that need roofs and windows. And everything has been stagnated because no one wants to do the right thing, and that's to put the interests of the residents first. Stay here all night. All night. Let's let's keep going. Go talk so, about the bills. Thanks, what do you want to supersede and do? Thank the board for holding and trust really me. the intention was to trust the attack until the attacks came. Trust me. And just go through the vote. But everybody was giving acknowledgement. So we want to talk about the bills and what the board has cut out. The, the bills are not being paid currently. At this very right, moment, I, I'm gonna let you finish. But you week, out of order, but I'm just trying to show y'all how y'all be so disrespectful. And y'all expect the respect to be respect. You out of order, trustee. Stick to the facts. The facts is on the agenda. We on corporate bills. Talk about the bills. So what do you want to talk about as it relates to the bills? That way we can get through the entire agenda. If we keep stopping, because everybody want to argue we'll about whatever they point right. is, because that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about corporate bills. So let's get through going back and forth about what bill y'all gonna take out, what bill y'all not gonna take out. Let's go through that. So, so go bills. to the bills. And I will name for uh, State Bank, which is our police vehicles, the, Durats, the Durangos and the Fiats for Public Works. That bill was approved by the board in May of 2023. We received an email stating that those cars will be repossessed if we do not get any payment. That email had been communicated already. Nobody responded. So imagine my surprise seven months later, I get an email. And I sent, I forward the email over like I do the other 15 that I've received. No response. And then come in here and say, oh, the board cut something out. I'm going over these construction, repaved all those streets. We're happy for that. Board approved that. June of 2023, they are owed $300,000. Just got an email two days ago about the police ammunition. Has it been paid? Overdue, December of 23. That hadn't even been presented to the board. So the board is approving what's needed. Another one, I'm getting calls about electricity, lights not being put on. Residents say the board hasn't approved it. Mead, which is the light post. For those who are not getting their lights paid, uh, turned on, board approved that. September 2023, lights still not on. Mead still has not received the payment. So this circus is being put on right now about put something back in the budget, we've seen there, it's been reported, and you know it's going to end up with, a, with, with, another, with another video because we're going to put the documentation out there. Everybody, we can come in here, say what we want to. At the end of the day, vendors are not being paid. Board approved it. The vendors are not being paid. So when you sit here and we talk about how we don't have the only item from the police budget specifically, and I'm saying that, I understand from each one... I understand that everybody up there had to say what they were told to say. Yes, to be honest. You do. But I'm going to say this. No. The police department works hard. The fire department works hard. Public works works hard. That's why I don't take any offense at what's being said, because I know where it's coming from. But if we're going to just talk about this in real terms, the items taken out, of, taken out of the departments was the overtime. And that's because the overtime is being spent in ways that it shouldn't. But if we want to talk about more officers, gladly, we put that in there. And I've just listed several, and I have more, items that have been approved by the board. People still haven't received the checks. Brother Moore, you prayed us in on unity. You prayed us in and came with the most divisive speech I heard in my life. Don't pray for me no more. on page two and i respond y'all gotta learn to do the exact same thing but it gets too y'all are targeting people they have the business but yeah that's all i'm saying to me and ask what we're doing what we're not doing just do your job don't worry about my job i'm being paid 700 um after that they lost in our faith motion failed Ooh we i don't know we got on y'all trustees thank you um, if I may, sure. Um, the estimate was presented. The board amended the estimate. Tax levy document approved in December because there was no estimate made 21 days prior to there too. So there's been a, an estimate of levies. And my understanding is that 
this tax levy before the board reflects the current estimate or the only estimate that's been on record. The actual passage of the tax levy mm -hmm. to be approved, I believe. Uh, Do you have advice that you don't need to make an estimate of tax? Yeah. Um, then the board will be, well, myself, I will be okay with voting for that. So I, again, it was amended as well. Uh, it was and fifty dollars mosca design sixty five thousand seven hundred dollars pekarski and sons thirty two thousand three hundred sixty dollars raul's raul and sons one hundred eighty one thousand nine hundred fifty dollars and white coal pool solutions thirty four thousand seven hundred eighty eight dollars and fifty eight cents my amended motion is to um, approve the bills with the exceptions listed second all right um any discussion yes right okay um i have some concerns and hopefully i get some answers um first off have we received the six point eight million dollars Keep going on your questions. Are you going to answer? Keep going on okay. questions because that got so, nothing to do with the bills. So that, that's, that's, that's grant money now. that was already, but okay. So everybody would know that that's the answer because it's not being answered. But on May 3rd, uh, we received the email from Bert, Costanza, and Carberry, which says that uh, we owe them $4,501.27. They've been requesting this since August, 23rd, uh, August 28th, 2023. Um, we once again get here. Um, I don't recall them being on the warrant list. So there's an issue that we pick and choose who we're putting on the warrant list who we're not putting on the warrant list. What really drew my concern was that um, someone sent us an email and then we actually spoke to this person on the phone. And the email reads, thanks for your call this morning. Per our conversation, see the attached. Uh, this engineering firm was hired and has a proposal signed by Mr. Freeman. Uh, his invoice number is 1092. He is saying that we owe him $7,482. So, of course, I asked what was it in reference to. He said that Mr. Freeman contacted him with the help of Ron Smith, who was the engineer, saying that they needed a proposal for 15022 Lincoln. Now, I'm concerned because 15022 Lincoln is not a property to my knowledge. So, why would we be paying a bill? for $7,482. I do know that as being a village that we do have to go through proper protocols and we don't have certified people to do this. But at the reading, it says, my email to the engineer on record on 11-21-2023 indicating our findings and concerns with the request for missing information or corrected drawings to be sent. A letter of our architect indicating numerous deficient items are highlighted, are highlighted for some of your review. The letter of our mechanical engineer indicating deficiency in items for your review. Again, we strongly recommend the construction stop immediately until such time these items are addressed by our architect on record. What you're going to say, I'm a, I guess I should continue to tell the residents the truth. Um, when we talk about our financial state, it's sad. You know, the things that I could tell you would scare you as a resident in regards to the things that the people who are over the day-to-day -day operation, the decisions that they make, the, the fact that they do not prioritize this spending, and then they come up here and say, hey, vote for this, vote for that. I found it quite interesting that we have our mayor that just sat up here and said, oh, um, you want receipts for the taxes? I'll put it on Snapchat. I found that particularly interesting considering that we've been asking for financials for months. Put that on, Snap on Snapchat for us, please. You, we have $4 million in checks that the board have approved that have not been dispersed. The checks are on someone's desk. Whose desk? We do not know. So when we are, when we continue to act for financials, when we make decisions, it's just responsible. You know, we were elected to do a job and that's what we're here to do. We keep saying, hey, this spending is getting out of control. We've been saying that for months. You have trustee Belcher just set up here and ask, hey, if we're making decisions on voting for the bills, uh, could someone tell us about the $6.8 million grant? We didn't receive an answer. But yet, 
we are told that we're, the bag is being here. The bag is present, but the bag is empty, guys. It's empty. We have, she, she stated, the public works. For months, Trustee House has been stating, hey, you know, we, we have to watch our spending. We have to prioritize the spending because we know that pay arts are due for public works and police. It's coming. It's coming. You have an administration that set up here months ago and said, oh, in April, we're going to make sure that you all are reimbursed because you all do such a great job of the village. And we want to make sure that we take great care of you because we love you so much. But yet, I'm receiving calls saying that they've only received one third of their money. So either we have the money or... So here we go. But I'm done talking because I know y'all use me for clickbait. Whatever else you got, if we're not going to pass anything, we can just move I was forward for discussion. on the vote. I was like, for discussion. Okay, so y'all going to talk to each other? <laughs> well, go All ahead. right, one more time, I'm clearing the room. Just saying, so one more time, I'm clearing the room. The point of wasting my time. Well, okay. that's what we're not going to amend or make changes or see the good in something. I'll wait for her to finish because I hate talking. Okay, talk. go ahead, say your statements, and then um, let me know when y'all done talking to each other. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for giving me permission to speak. Thanks. I appreciate it. Let, let's first uh, start with this mayor and her smoking mirrors. You know, I sit here and we come and we say, you know, I say to myself, I'm not going to cut up with her today. OK, but then I sit here and I listen to lie after lie. And she tells you everything but the truth. Like my grandma say, you're lying. The truth ain't in you. Now we sit here and we talk about finances when one we haven't even went over a budget, a yearly budget. How can you ask us to make responsible financial decisions on behalf of an entire village when you haven't even presented a budget for moving forward, but yet you continue to say, make these choices, make these decisions. We don't know where we stand as a village in terms of the financials. You are paying vendors 10 times the money that they should be paid. So let me explain this for you residents. Let me educate um, us. A tree. We have a tree on the block. So we have residents calling about trees and they have an issue with the tree. So we look on, well, when we were provided with access to my viewpoint, what we were noticing is we would have an invoice on there for $1,000 for a tree trim, okay? Then the very next month, we have another invoice for the exact same tree for $10,000 to cut it down. Sounds like double dipping to me. You sit there and you say, well, we have nothing to hide. Well, if there's nothing to hide, provide us with the information. That's very simple. We, we, the budget is due at the end of June, yet it is June 3rd. And you all, this administration hasn't even provided us with the upcoming budget. We haven't even had a discussion. But what they'll do is next month, they'll run to us and say, hey, guys, here's the budget for millions of dollars. And don't worry about spending time and going over it. We don't have time at the moment. We just need you to approve it. And then they get angry when we don't approve it. I'll motion a second. Any discussion? Uh, yes, ma'am. I have another superseding motion. Okay. Uh, this will be um, approving the bills as read with the with the following removals. These are the same individuals that were removed in the previous month. So this is nothing new, just um, a matter of record. Uh, so approving the bills as read, removing page five, Delgado Law Group, $119,620.81. Page five, existing concrete, $14,123.03. Page six, five star, $122,325. Page seven, John Crow Trees, $155,000 even. Page eight, KNM Ventures, $183,950. Page eight, Lopez Law and Maintenance, $10,050. Page nine, Mosca Design, $65,700. Page 11, Raul and Sons, $181,950. And page 13, White Coal Pool Solutions, $34,788.58. Um, a motion is to approve the bills with the following items removed. Second. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, any discussion? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> um, on <clears throat> this page where Enterprise fleets. Um, I know that the gentleman has stated that the payments were delinquent, and um, I asked for a copy of the lease. Um, we approved this in September 7th of 2021. Um, based on the, because I went back to look at the YouTube, um, we approved to trade out the vehicles. Um, the vehicles that we have, because we currently had at that time 46 vehicles, you guys have bought 
30 new vehicles, which totaled one million one hundred five thousand dollars and some change. Um, my question to that was, and I asked um, your, I don't know what Devontae's uh, title is at this point, but I asked in reference to, uh, did we turn in some vehicles? Because when I looked at the meeting, it said based on we were going to be turning in vehicles for the lease for the fleets. None of the, per the uh, guy, Christopher Fry, who emailed me back said that none of the vehicles was turned in. So if we didn't turn in any vehicles and we purchased 28 new vehicles, because that's what the exact total is, 28 new vehicles, where are those old vehicles? So why don't you think we have the old vehicles? You said what? I said, why you don't think we have the old vehicles? Oh, I'm so glad you asked me that. I was asking a question, but the reason I'm asking that is because by historically, if you're selling anything, it should go through the board because in 2021, you put that you were selling some stuff in the basement and you bought it in front of us and said, this stuff is the surplus, you know, that we have to go in front of the body to sell stuff. But y'all been selling these cars on govdeal.org and it hasn't came across the board. Uh, first of all, we didn't sell anything from out of the basement. A uh, lie. I we got it. Not, her name is Molly. We Mali. did not sell anything from out of the basement. And when you guys said you did not want to clean, hold on, you did. When you I guys said you did not want to clean Billy Child, it's right when I got in office, all that trash, all that trunk, whether it was couches, furniture, is still down there now. So we did not. As it relates to vehicles, okay. as it relates to vehicles, that would be Keith Freeman question, because he's the one handled the vehicles, as you know this already. But no, 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 but you know all this already. So when we get to the hold on, so when we get to the board meeting, I don't understand why we grandstand. You said, and I quote, I spoke to Keith Freeman. So if you guys have that type of rapport, why don't you do that before you get here instead of putting on a show? And you would have got your answer instead of putting on a show once again. Okay, so, so let me say this, because I think that, for one, you never addressed the fact that it was supposed to go through the board, however you just wanted to spend it. Two, I did speak to Keith Freeman. Keith, when I called you, I called you about what? That's a, I think that's a... Uh, when I called, wait, wait, hold, I up, call hold, you up, hold up, stop, 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 stop. Before you start with the whole stuttering thing, just relax. Everybody relax. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm very respectful for everybody. Let's be respectful. All right, okay, citizens. Guys, citizens, be quiet. Let them talk. I think the first thing is, is that if you did have a question, I think the best thing to do, because you know I would have answered the question, is if you called me. I think I want to answer the question. If I couldn't answer the question, at least I would have been able to tell you I can't answer the question. Second thing is all fleet. Every single vehicle that's in our fleet is being managed by the police department. They have a spreadsheet. And I, I would have been it. and I would have been able to tell you which vehicles have been swapped out and which ones weren't. The other thing is the last part is to answer to answer all of your questions is 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 that if you and I had a conversation with Chris Fry, then maybe we would have been able to get to the bottom of it. And as opposed to answering it right now, and it's a loaded question, and I have nothing in front of me to answer. One more thing, one more thing, too. One more thing. I think this is really, really important. And this deal, this enterprise deal, was done prior to me being here. That's correct. It was a Dorothy Brown deal. That's correct. So if I, if I don't have the contract in front of me, and the contract doesn't say, hey, listen, Maybe these particular vehicles are, are being swapped out. This VIN number, this VIN number, this VIN number swapped out for this amount, this amount, this amount. Then I can't tell you that. So I agree. I agree that it's a valid question. But what I think is a better way of communicating with me and probably everybody else so we don't get all the ahs and o's is maybe you can contact me and maybe we can continue the relationship that we have of communicating prior to us getting here. That would have been respectful, so we wouldn't just be put on the hook like this. That, that's true, and you Thank know, you. and I you are, and I and I definitely appreciate that. But as our conversation went, when I asked about why our agenda items wasn't on there, and he said, "Well, you know," then that conversation went 
the mayor was not available, it should have been that somebody would have got back to us. So I'm not trying to put you on the hook for anything. She the one said talk to you about it. I know exactly when it took place. Dorothy Brown was here. The lease was signed October 15th. I don't need you, me, and Keith, I mean, and Chris Fry on there. What my conversation was to you about or to the board or whoever is running the day-to-day -day operations is that if these are something that even, not even the cars, the fact that selling anything that's a surplus goes in front of the board of trustees. Is that, am I not right? You're right about that. But okay. we didn't have a conversation about that on the phone. That, that's didn't true. mention that on the phone. What you mentioned to me was is that you would like to place on the agenda a discussion item. You didn't say, and I quote, I want to discuss this prior to me putting it on the agenda. That's one. The second thing is, is that part of that agreement may say that you are swapping out whatever those vehicles are. And I can't have an intelligent conversation with you about that if it's not in front of me. I think to be helpful to one another so I can be prepared, so that the mayor can be prepared and everyone in our administration can be prepared, it would have been it would have been better served for us to have that conversation prior to now. That's fine. D d take the cars out. The issue is anything that goes as a surplus that's being sold by the village of Dawson, does it go in front of the board of trustees? Yes or no? Yes. Now, can okay. I ask you a question? May I ask a question? Absolutely. Do you have a copy of the contract with Enterprise in front of you that says that, hey, listen, these are a list of vehicles that could be swapped out that was already prior approved for the board? Absolutely. You know I do. That's and good. I got the email that says, hi, Kiana, attached is the current active lease schedules as well as the list in the Excel of current vehicles on the lease with Enterprise. I don't see where we ever received a vehicle to sell on your behalf mm -hmm. or to trade in. Also, I've attached a master lease agreement in case that you need it for a reference. I'll work on pulling all of the invoices. Please let me know about payment. So you answered the question yourself. No. The question, listen, no, 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 listen, question. listen, listen, wait, hold on. Hold that's on. not the question. No, no, no. Because listen. I have a separate list you, you, of the Excel sheet of cars that have you, been sold. You're not listening to what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that if you guys already have a master list of the vehicles that are supposed to be sold. It's not you guys. Kiana does. Kiana. Okay. Trustee Belcher, if you have a master list of the vehicles that are always supposed to be sold, then you already agreed to it as a board. No. And, and without and this listen, is the list listen. of cars that we purchased not okay. to be sold. That's what I asked. That's the question. That this I is the list of cars no, no, no. that we purchased. You missed, you, missed, okay. you missed the question. Okay, guys. So the, you do the, know this the is on all was if they're selling anything, it should go so in front of the board. Excuse me? You know this is on the agenda item, so I guess we're not going to discuss it no longer after y'all get done. I mean, it, as long as you keep putting a fired uh, mic on there, so as many times as we can put it on there, we can... Discuss. No, what I'm saying is you're discussing it now. We're in the middle of bills. That's our and item this is to a, be discussed. And this is a financial okay. issue. And that's fine, but I'm saying it's on the agenda for discussion. So and why would we not... financial issue. issue. You won't listen. Forget it. All right, Keith, that's enough. All right, what else? <laughs> Anything else? about bills not the bills not being paid or that the board would, were not responding on this warrant list i'm looking at the dalton professional firefighters one two three four five six payments one from an april 5th payday one from may 17th payday one from december 29th 23 payday one for five from april 19th payday one from may 31st and one from 614 uh totaling five thousand nine hundred eighty dollars that is included on this list um, it's included for payment, but I want to make sure that the hardworking firemen know that uh, the board is just seeing this for the first time, and we're glad to approve these items when they come when they are presented. Thank you. All right. Anything I, else? Yeah. Go ahead. The the when we discuss bills, and it's this is mainly just so we clear for the residents. The point is that there's a mismanagement of money and they're not prioritizing the spending. That's the entire part. This, that's the hassle for us because as residents, our goal is to make sure that when you all call, you all have these services. But if they continue to mismanage the money when they're taking, when they're sitting in first class seats, but they can't fix the streets, that's a problem. So we have an issue where even when we talk about the leases, the issue of the leases coming up is the fact that, yes, we did as a board vote on the enterprise contract because we did feel as if it was necessary to have newer cars 
for our employees. However, when you have a million dollars in leases that we did not approve, the issue is that we cannot afford it. Let's take the Tahoes back with all of that interest and pay the firefighters what is due to them moving forward. There are other ways to spend this money. We're not prioritizing. Everything is a party. There's nothing to celebrate when you have employees that are not being taken care of the right way, when they're not being compensated properly. So again, these things are not being brought in front of the board. And what happens is we're going broke and we continue to say this, we continue to say this, and this is a big issue. We, we thought it was important to give you a little bit of insight um, into credit card use um, by uh, village employees. Um, we do not have complete information yet. Um, it is our hope that we will get further cooperation and be able to have a complete picture of credit cards, but we wanted to share with you um, what we do know so far. We are aware that the, over this time period, from 2021 to the present, the village used six different credit cards um, at various points from January 2021 through May of this year. Four American Express cards um, that uh, appear to have been used um, by various folks uh, within the police department. The statements for these accounts were addressed to Ernest Mobley, Robert Collins, and Louis Lacey. Uh, Mayor, may I interject oh, there for a moment? Oh, my God. Uh, 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 former Deputy Chief Mobley is, is present with us and an amazing officer, so I'm certain there was no mis, misuse or misconduct on that behalf. So I want to make sure I uh, state that because he has been a, an exemplary officer. Yeah, we, we, all we know is what we've seen in the paper so far. We have not interviewed any of these folks to get a better understanding of the specifics around and credit card use. Um, we have some knowledge of that, but we'll share that um, as part of the final report. There's one American Express card for which statements are addressed to Keith Freeman, uh, the village administrator. And there was a one fifth third card, um, which statements are addressed to the village. We've been told that that card is no longer um, in use. <clears throat> we understand from the records we've received from uh, the Kasparic uh, company in, in interviews that we've con conducted that receipts for credit card purchases are rarely provided. Further, we understand that the credit card balance, because it comes due, of course, every month, we all know that, um, is paid as a matter of course. And it was reflected in the accounting records as miscellaneous police department expenditures. We're looking into what is the reason and rationale for that. But what this means is that these credit card um, bills that are paid do not appear on warrant lists and are therefore not presented to the board for approval. Again, that will be a recommendation that we make. And the board is obviously aware of this issue, um, which is in part why they took the action that they took the other day to um, rein in the credit card spending. We also understand from the Kasparic uh, company um, that the only time a credit card charge would be reflected on a warrant list is if a receipt is provided. And as I said, our information is that the receipts are rarely provided. Mm. We want to highlight a couple of um, credit card purchases. <clears throat> yeah, I told you, remember we went over this the other day? You, you're having the same reaction that we did when we saw this. Target, let me tell you, Target, Walgreens, Best Buy, these are the ones that I talked about. Oh, we got more to talk about now. So in particular, we were very concerned to see the top three purchases that were highlighted for you um, that were booked on uh, January 5th of 2023. That's roughly $40,000, a little more than that, in credit card purchases on Amazon in the same day. And our understanding, and our understanding is that 
The village does not have an Amazon account. These are somebody using one of the credit cards and charging these amounts using your tax dollars. Mm -hmm. We suspect we're going to see, as you can see, expenditures at Target, Walgreens, um, Best Buy, a number of yep. charges that raise questions in our mind. Are these legitimate purchases using the credit cards? Hmm. I'm looking at some of the stuff I got. Well, we've also found in the credit cards, um, I know that there's been a lot of interest in travel. And we are highlighting here on this slide some of the travel that is reflected in the village credit cards. Birmingham, Alabama and Montgomery, Alabama in March of 2023 with five known travelers. Washington DC in 2023 with four known travelers. Las Vegas, Nevada with eight known travelers. Okay. Jackson, Mississippi in June of 2023 with three known travelers. Austin, Texas in July of 2023 with three known travelers. Portland, Oregon, in July of 2023 with four travelers. Central and Southern Illinois in September of 2023, I think you're aware of what happened during that time. 10 hotel rooms booked during that travel. <clears throat> Traveled in New York City in October of 2023, one traveler. Atlanta, Georgia in November of 2023, one traveler. On the Village's and credit cards. And I, I, I caveat that because we will, and are continuing to look at, I'll say cross-pollination between the village and the township and the credit card use there as well. Mm. <clears throat> yep, I got both. It sounds like it's been cross So let me, let me summarize for you kind of where, what we presented, what we found so far regarding the finances. Mm -hmm. The general fund is used to pay the vast majority of the village's expenses. As you heard, as of May 31st of this year, the fund had a negative balance of 3.65 million. Oh the village's general fund expenditures have exceeded revenues the past two fiscal years, um, ending April 30th, 2023 and April 30th, 2024. As of June 30th of this year, the cash on hand in unrestricted accounts is insufficient to cover the held checks valuing $6.1 million. Every election. So now, because they can't beat me, they got to do this smear campaign to convince public opinion that I'm bad for them. So you said two elections. You were first elected in 2021? No, 2013 was my first election for trustee. Was I was a trustee. trustee. I set where they are. Right. That's why on, I know the, the law. Council. Yes. Elected mayor 2021. Yes. Term is four years? Yes. Okay. Uh, plans are running for re-election? I'm running for both my seats. And yeah. I'm going to win them. So, and when is the election for Thornton Township? 2025. So those elections are the same time? They are. Bullshit? A bullshit? A bullshit? A bullshit? Okay, next. A bullshit? A bullshit? The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, Realist investing can seem intimidating, but today I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access.